Welcome to Nismo TV News, where we're bringing you the week in motorsport, more specifically from the Silverstone circuit, where we have some exciting news for you because we have a winner of the GT Academy race camp. But for the specifics, I'm going to leave that to Sam. So it's the final six here at Silverstone, up on the podium at the moment. One of those guys is going to be the 2016 GT Academy winner. We don't know who it's going to be, but we're going to find out. Johnny from Well, the overall winner of GT Academy 2016 is Johnny from Mexico, and we're going to have a word with him right now. So, Johnny from Mexico, a very right. soggy Johnny yeah. from Mexico. You smell very much of elderflower. <laughs> 2016 GT Academy winner. How does that feel? Uh, incredible. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I can barely believe it. And you're looking forward to now all the people in Mexico, all the guys at home. You got a message for those guys? Uh, thanks for the support. Uh, to, well, I don't, I don't know if I have many followers in Mexico who speak English, but uh, so I'll say it in, in Spanish. <laughs> gracias a todos. Eh, gracias a, a todos mis amigos, a mi familia, a, eh, a mi abuela, a mi abuela, a todos. <laughs> en serio. Gracias. So, heading into the final races of the 2016 Super GT season, and I say races because we've got round three and round eight. Round three is the replacement for the cancelled race earlier in the season, so now we're going to be having two races on one weekend at Motegi. And I have, sitting on the right-hand side of me, one of the championship contenders in the GT300 class, Jan Mardenborough. Jan, welcome. Hello. Now, I want you to tell me a little bit about your thoughts going into that race right now. Pretty excited. It's um, nice to be fighting for a championship. But yeah, it's going to be you know, really exciting. I think there's four or five cars that can win the championship at that last in those two races. 40 points to play for. Second in the championship at the moment. So <laughs> first would be, would be nice. Now, the Matagi circuit's a bit of a funny one because you've got the bank oval, which isn't used because it's damaged years back and then the road course, which you say is a bit bit like go-kart track. How do you find it just from a driving point of view? Because you've done it in F3 and in GT. Yeah, I really like the circuit. Uh, a lot of drivers don't. My teammate doesn't like it. Um, I don't, do you like it, Chiu? Um, maybe that track is quite boring. It's lots of break, stop and go. Uh, not exciting corners. Uh, yeah, but if it's rain, it's going to be, yeah, I think, different. It always rains at Motegi. Well, Chio, it's good to have you with us as well. Now, you're going to be fighting for victory in the GT500 category in that lovely Michelin shod GTR. Now, the first question I've got for you on this subject, you've driven both the GT3 car and the GT500 car. How do they compare? Uh, GT3 and GT500, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely different. Yeah, the GT500 has lots of downforce and engine feeling is different. Uh, it's time is almost 10 seconds different. It's, it, can you imagine that? It's uh, 10 seconds faster than GT3. But GT3 is it, it's quite fast enough, but yes, GT500 is, is just you know, massively fast. Well, the Super GT Grand Final from Motegi will be live, both races, 250 kilometers each, here on Nismo TV. So hit subscribe and tune in. So, it's your comment, and as you can see, once again, we have the boss with us, Mike Carcamo. Mike, welcome back to, well, to Britain for the filming of this and to yes. your own YouTube channel. <laughs> well, we had a lot of comments from you guys at home about, well, questions from Mike, really, so I'm just going to fire straight into some of those questions. And first up, as usual, it seems to be now, is Jeremy J. Keep up the superb work. You're doing a great job. You should really see any of the superb stuff that we've created and the community they've created out of nothing. Mm. The community is quite important to absolutely. Nismo, isn't it? That's one of the yeah. key things about doing this. A absolutely. I mean, that's why we do Nismo TV. I think that that's, I mean, that's what racing is about. I mean, if you're not on the racetrack, why not talk about racing? So, it's yeah. awesome. Sly Frequency, uh, we asked this question last week. Working for Nismo would be a dream come true. A lot of people say about working for Nismo. Yeah. It's not that straightforward, is it, getting a job for Nismo? Most people come in through Nismo through, ne through the engineering structure. Uh, that's the most typical way. Um, whether it's uh, country-based, like in the US, or in Europe, in, in the UK, in Cranfield, or directly in, in Japan at our, our headquarters. But normally there's a process by which you come into Nissan 
and then at some point you might be given an opportunity to go work there for a period of time as a learning apprenticeship or uh, maybe come back later in your career depending on what type of career you've already had. So it's not as straightforward as applying to Nismo, um, but, but obviously within Nissan, uh, everyone looks at it as a, as a pretty great opportunity. Exactly. And there's also, there's also the other teams, RJN, some of the teams who produce some of the parts and the components and run the, t run the cars. I mean. Sure. There's lots of ways to be involved with Nissan racing, obviously, and in, in, in all of our GT3 programs are run by independent teams in whatever region they are, and those are always a great place, as well as um, maybe even starting you know, your own team in one of the lower categories, whether it's TC racing or GT4 racing. Say it, Mike. So, Say it. Micro Cup. Or Micro Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Eric B says, you guys are doing great work. Motors, motorsport is better with you around. Oh, well, well, thank you, nice, Eric isn't B. it? Calsonic says, what do you think of the R33 Skyline GTR? Solid Skyline. I mean, I can't, I mean, I think each of the, each of the Skylines, each generation has its own unique characteristic. I mean, I think you, you, the 32, the 33, the 34, I'm sure the, the you know, future is going to be that way. I think that's you need, to, you need to discuss the future there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's, that's what's great about having a heritage car like that. You know, something has history. Each generation, people working on it are passionate about being better than the last one. So uh, there's always new engineers wanting to work on projects, and I think that that's, I think that's what makes Skyline special. Now, one of my favorite comments this week comes from Malwarnage. Is it me, or is Mike Carcamo a grown-up Lewis Hamilton in a certain angle? Is that true? It would not be the first time, and I have several selfies of, of me next to Lewis Hamilton in cardboard cutout. You can't tell us apart. I think, I think, I think we need some. Do you have one of these tattoo sleeves that goes? I, <laughs> I can get one. I can get one. Now, R.AEL has asked a question. He's wondering, is there an official GTR or Nismo online store where he can buy some Nismo swag? Caps, hats, flags? You know, I, actually, that's a, it's a great question, and I, and I thanks for bringing that up. And if people are very interested in that, we'd love to hear more comments on that. We don't uh, actually have a, like a global online store. But it's something that we are considering, and, and obviously if people are interested, it'll just help push that idea maybe over the line. And that is the really the rounding up of the comments for this week for Mike. But I know Mike's got some extra stuff he wants to say to you guys at home. What's that then, Mike? Just to keep tuning into Nismo TV, keep giving us your comments and your feedback. We, we are really excited about it, and we're looking to keep building this program. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Can you tell me a little bit about the legacy behind uh, GT Academy? We have had a series of winners come into our cars, GT4 and GT3, over the years, starting in 2008 with Lucas Odenis. Um, so we, we're delighted to have them, and they've always delivered great results for us, and we're looking forward to working with our new winner. <laughs> Have you noticed a change um, in the participants in, in race camp? Well, I've noticed the race camp itself has become far more uh, technical, far more sophisticated, far more challenging for the contestants. And that in itself is good because that, that's brought to us people that are, are compete from day one. Whereas before, in the earlier days, maybe fitness and things like this wasn't taken into account. It was just really the speed on the game and now, now we're getting a more complete sort of winner. There are so many of the winners of Race Camp who've gone on to do extremely well. Are, do you have any of... Uh do you have any favourites? On any given day, when we get a great result, they're my favourite. No, I've enjoyed working with them all. Yeah, and it's great that they come back to race camp and then they act as mentors and, you know, they can help people to understand what they learned. And it really seems as though race camp is, you know, as you say, like it's evolving a lot. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, you get people come to race camp like Chio, who didn't come through the academy, Chio-san, but he's so enthusiastic with it. He's helped the, 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 the contestants. And then you get other people like Florian Strauss, who's one of, one of my favourite Academy winners, who hasn't necessarily got to drive at this moment, but he's still here, he's still enthusiastic, and he's still fully behind the whole idea of the Nissan GT Academy. Okay, well great, have a lot of fun with the new winner. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, that is what a very happy Mexican looks like, and I think we're going to hear that name a lot more. It's Johnny from Mexico. Oh, look at 
look, it's a GT3 car.